In this Inspired Insider.com interview, we talk with Ken Kaufman. He's the founder of New Living Expo. He talks about how they attract 16,000 visitors to the event. He talks about how he gets big name speakers like John Gray and Dan Millman. That and much more coming up right now. Jeremy Weiss here. We're here with Ken Kaufman. Just a little about Ken. You know, Ken's event, the New Living Expo, attracts 16,000 visitors from across the country to explore ways to improve their health, their prosperity, and their happiness. There's going to be 1,200 exhibitors, over 250 speakers. This year will be the 12th annual conference, and it attracts speaker lineup of renowned speakers celebrities, scientists, and doctors. And it features people like John Gray, who's the author of Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus, Dan Melman, author of, of Way of the Peaceful Warrior. Ken's been doing the New Living Expo for 26 years. It's amazing. And a fun fact about Ken is he likes molding clay. Ken, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Jeremy. <laughs> and Ken just endured about an hour of technical difficulty, so thank you for that too, Ken. You're welcome. <laughs> um, <laughs> we get lots of comments from people who have tons of ideas, they don't know where to start, or they, they've they started and they're just trying to attract people and sales to their business. And, you know, our audience would love to hear your take on this because you have attracted tens of thousands of people to your event, hundreds of speakers, and thousands of exhibitors. And alone, that's an amazing, each one of them alone is amazing. Before we get started with a few things, could you tell us, how did you come up with the idea originally? Well, it wasn't originally my idea. It was a, a buddy of mine back in the early 80s that mm -hmm. heard about it as a business opportunity. Okay. And way back when, on the Venice Beach boardwalk in L.A., I used to sell little massage trinkets, and I had a machine that would actually was called a, um, you know, the, in back then it was an upside-down machine, but mm -hmm. an anti-gravity machine. Right. And on the Venice Beach Boardwalk, I would put it for sale out there. I wasn't really expecting to sell them, but it was definitely kind of an amusement thing. Mm -hmm. And people would go by on a Sunday morning after they had their little brunch, and they would walk by the Venice Beach Boardwalk, and they would people would be hawking different items. And I had this upside-down machine that I would hmm. get some uh, people who were just walking by to hang upside down for a little few minutes. Hmm. Boy, that drew a lot of attention. I'd get a crowd of 50 people looking at me going, huh, what is this thing? So I, I got a lot of, uh, you know, sort of started out like that, selling uh, little wears and tears at the beach, and then I started selling the health food stores, and then eventually I sold them in the expos. Oh, wow. And I did a, few, did a few shows in the early 80s, and then from that, when I heard it was for sale, the Whole Life Expo in the mid-80s, I thought, well, hell, I've already been an exhibitor. Why not buy as an owner? Because I could really feel as an exhibitor that... Um, and that's probably the biggest difference of me being a producer is that I was an exhibitor before I was an owner. Mm -hmm. And so I really have the best of heart for the exhibitors than most promoters because I was on that side of the fence yeah. before I was an owner. So it gives me a different perspective, you know? Right. So what did you see as an exhibitor um, when you first were doing the shows that helped you to kind of run it now? Um, I think I just, I really got that they really need to be taken care of mm -hmm. and not just, you know, label the number and don't care about them. I give a lot of attention to each exhibitor and mm -hmm. they're actually blown away of how much time I give them if they need it because they're maybe the first time doing a show and they have no idea what they're getting into and I just really make them feel comfortable and calm and, and relaxed and make sure that they know how to maximize their time when they're at the show because maybe it's only 25 hours of their life, but... I want to make sure they have the most uh, bang for their buck that they get, and it's actually paid off after you know 26 years <laughs> of doing this thing. Uh, enough people have uh, stayed with me over the years to continue the business. Yeah. So before we get to how, how you built this up with tens of thousands of attendees, speakers, you know, exhibitors, what was one of the low points you remember when you first were running the the event, like a, a roadblock that you hit? Oh, man, that was great. The very first show we did at Moscone Center in San Francisco in 87, um, we had forgot about the insurance. 
to buy for the show. Wow. So we had we had probably 50 exhibitors waiting to get in with food in their cars, trying to get into the loading dock to, to uh, unload for the show on Thursday. And we couldn't open up that hall before we had insurance. So we scrambled like crazy to find some sort of insurance at a high rate wages price. But we got it. And, I mean, the, the Lars, a low point, boy, that was risky because the very first one you're doing to have that kind of, you know, you you have so many little nuts and bolts to have to do and figure right. out ahead of time, but that's the one of the biggest ones. So from that point, ever since that, I always made sure I had my insurance way early. Because, <laughs> you know, you don't want to make that mistake again, you know. And so that was that was a pretty low point. I had another low point when I we were doing a, a Cleveland show. We were, it was like 97, 98, and we hadn't paid our our fee to the convention center and they were ready to close us down and the company was not doing so well back then and so I was like and we had to borrow the money from some local PR person to uh, to you know make the make it enough to where we could open the doors but that was definitely a low point too <laughs> a couple of those so the PR person loaned you the money to, to actually get into the event or to yeah they loaned the us like I think it was like 20 grand or something wow. we had to have cash and they scrambled on a on a Thursday afternoon to uh, come up with some money, and you know, we paid them back on the revenue from the box office. But it was like, you know, it was like we we weren't sure if we we're going to even be able to have the show. And wow! Now from there, tell us about one of the high points, one of the the some of the a milestone that you're most proud of. Well, the, you know, it's funny because. Overall, I always, you know, people after the show, they always call you up. And even during the show, you know, like now people call you up and thank you so much for doing the show and supporting the, the community and so forth. But to me, the, the one of the highest points is when I hear people, and I've got many people that I know that actually gone to the show and they, they walked around and they, they, you know, they talked to lots of different people. And then they finally found somebody that they really liked. Mm-hmm. They end up becoming married after a while. And then because they, they met at the show. Oh, really? And so I would say there's dozens of people. I don't even know probably how many, but I bet you if we took an inventory of how many people met and got married from the expo, probably be hundreds. Seriously? I mean, it's just it's really truly amazing because it's a, it's a similar sort of mindset of people mm-hmm. who go to the show, mm-hmm. so they have that similarity, and it's really hard to meet people these days to. You know, sort of hook up that way. They have your values, and yeah, you click with. Yeah. Yeah. So it's you know, and you think about. It, I think about going to a party, and where you're going to be hanging out the most is in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. And so what I what I developed in the show is, is that I have the largest food court. It's 60 feet by about 200 feet long, of you know half a dozen eight natural food booths. Wow. selling food, but the biggest area in the middle is a giant networking event of all the tables and people sitting, relaxing, networking, talking, socializing, and it's like that's the main party vibration of the show. It's just people like hanging out there and just, you know, disseminating the information, you know? Yeah. So hundreds of people, wow. So from a personal standpoint from these people, it has really impacted them. What was a milestone for the business aspect? Because I know you said early on it wasn't doing so well, and now you get tens of thousands of people coming to the show. Well, the, I sold the expo, Whole Life Expo, in 98 mm-hmm. uh, as a 12-year run of a show. And at that point, it was sort of going downhill because we were expanding around the country a little bit too much at that time. Mm-hmm. And, and when somebody decided to buy it, uh, we were like, oh great, you know, we're ready, we're ready to hand off the torch to the next person. Mm-hmm. And after a year, they lost a million dollars. And after they sold whoa. it to somebody else, that person, after a year and a half, lost four million dollars. We're like, whoa. And then at 9-11 hit, and then they just closed it down. So my milestone there was to resurrect it pretty much from nothing. Wow. I had to, ch- I had to change the name because the people had, canceled a couple of shows of Whole Life in the 2001 mm-hmm. after 9-11 they, they didn't refund the people's money and uh. gave a little bit of a bad blood so I changed the name and started from scratch as New Living Expo in 02 and uh, you know just doing one show a year which is much more manageable than trying to do it seven or eight around the country Right. 
and I work with a very, you know, I have one to two people in my office working. I have a few other people, graphic designer working in their own homes, but it's, it kept it small and much more controllable than, mm -hmm. you know, going around the country and having a staff of 30 people and not knowing what anybody's doing at any given time. So, right. you know, it, it took a sort of an evolution of time and now it's been another 12 years and I have the person who bought the rights for whole FX Expo looking at merging companies again and, and uh, maybe after next year. So it's like I'm in a 12-year cycle. You know, do it for 12 years, stop it for a few, and I had like a sabbatical started again for another 12 years, and maybe I'm going to do something different for next year. It's kind of open right now. Yeah. So what did you see as one of the pivotal things you did um, the second time around that you were able to build it up? Um, what, what, but the main thing is that when I sold the company, everybody got paid. So my name was still good out there in the world, especially mm -hmm. in the Bay Area where it started in the Bay Area. Right. And so what really, you know, gave me the ability to be able to do it again is that people were willing to help, to, you know, support it. And I only had three and a half months to pull off the very first show in 02 because I didn't know about it until January. Right. And we did the first show in like the end of April, like we always do. Um, but, you know, to, to be able to have the timing and, and the, and the community support and the support of the exhibitors that I had known for years, but I was, I pretty much fell out of the loop for so many years, three years. Right. So they just were like, you know, oh my God. And the very first show I did in 02, uh, people walked around and my wife was remember hearing some people saying, oh, this feels just like the old days of good old Whole Life Expo. Hmm. That's and a big compliment, right? Huge, huge. Yeah. And my wife gets goosebumps when she says the story, you know, because she just gets like, you know, just it just really rad. And they didn't know they were talking to the the owner's wife at the time, you know. Uh -huh. They're just sharing somebody they know. Hey, this is this is like good good vibration, and it, it just really makes you think that it's not really the name of the show; it's the person behind it that gives the energy and mm -hmm. the love that I have for it yeah. to make it really happen, you know. Yeah, so how do you get 16,000 people to an event, though? That just well, seems you know, huge. You just you put it out there in the world, and, you know, I advertise like crazy, print ads, social media, program guides. I mean, we print 150,000 program guides. It fills up a 40-foot container of program. We mail out 60,000 program mm -hmm. guides into homes. And it's a, it's a massive cost. But at the same time is that there was, there was enough revenue from the exhibitors to support right. it. And you have to have a lot of people. If you have, you know, that many exhibitors, you need to have a lot of people to, to make them happy, you know. Right. So What's it's a ratio the, balance, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Well, it's, it's the balance of how many attendees compared to how many exhibitors you have. If you have 50 exhibitors and 1,000 people, that might be fine. Right. But you you need to tens of thousands of attendees to to uh, you know fill up the hall with people and create the create the energy. Well, that, that's why this is seems so amazing too because you have to get attendees, you have to get speakers and exhibitors. Right. So I mean, how do you get the some of the big name speakers early on when you're starting or even throughout to make it well, you know? People like John Gray are personal friends of mine. Um, that really helps. Um, and I guess being in the industry for you know. 25, 30 years, mm -hmm. you get to know a lot of people and, and you, you know, you just kind of pick and choose who you want. And it's really kind of a, a luck thing too, because I put out there maybe for 50 people that I want mm -hmm. and maybe only 20 say yes. Mm -hmm. So that molds the show of who's willing to do it, who's available that weekend, you know, so those criteria, you never really know right. eight months out how, who is going to be your keynote speakers, but you just put it out there and see who's kind of hot and like David Wilcock right now is really hot and so we booked him and you know so we kind of see who's hot who's out there and mm -hmm. and you know coming up and, and being you know some of these speakers uh, were very little named speakers when they first started with Whole Life Expo but then through the years they, they grew. got yeah. yeah they grew like crazy yeah so I mean especially the people who are hot how do you attract them to they probably have really busy schedules. How do you attract them to get them to the, you know, the exhibition? Well, I mean, I'm I'm lucky because people like John Gray don't charge anything to me. I mean, if you somebody like that goes to a, a conference in another place, they could be fifty thousand dollars. Right. Yeah. Exactly. 
And, um, you know, you go to China, it's $100,000, you know, something like that for speakers. But it's the relationships that I built that yeah. gives me the luxury of uh, getting these people for either nothing or very little, right. you know, cover expenses. And so I'm blessed to be able to yeah. uh, have that ability, you know, and just they like me. <laughs> for I mean, for people out there, too, they want to have quality relationships with people. What would you tell them to do to form the, those quality relationships? Because for you, it, it almost seems like natural, but you must be doing something that allows you to do that. Well, it's uh, I'll probably I mean, either my personality or my prefer, prefer, perseverance, you know, to, uh, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes I'll ask people, you know, many years in a row, I've asked, there's probably 10, 12 speakers I've asked, almost every other year to, hey, come and speak, you know, you're a celebrity or whatever, and they say mm-hmm. no, but I still ask them, and then once in a while they say yes, you know. Right, and, right. And uh, it's just, you know, it's just beating the drum, you know, to where I just don't accept no as a final answer, it's no right now. You know? Right, gotcha. <laughs> what, would, what would be one thing, Ken, that you'd recommend the audience to do right now to, you know, start attracting people, whether it's their product or, or event or service? Well, um, besides have a booth at the show. Uh, <laughs> That's one, have a booth at the show, have if they're in the that show. industry, yeah. Number one would be that. Number two would just be, uh, you know, get out there in the world and, and you, know, you know, put yourself out there because I think a lot of people, they figured, you know, they have a great product, they have a website, they think mm-hmm. it's just going to be, you know, you know, rolling in the dough, but I have to get the name of their company and their website out there in the world so people know to find them. So through social media to, you know, buying display ads to let people know, going to the chamber of commerce meetings and just anywhere you can network with people to talk about your products and yeah. whatever service you have, you know, and just to put yourself out there in the world. And some people are usually, you know, good at one thing and not good at another. So when you know that about yourself, Find somebody that's good at the thing that you're not, and you know, get them and go into what you're doing. Yeah, I mean, sometimes it just feels, I think, overwhelming. Like, where do I start? Like, you know, you you have all this stuff that you could do. What have you well, found to could, be the most they effective? Could have, they, they could have a booth in a you know smaller show that might not cost them like they would. In, mm-hmm. in our show is about twelve hundred dollars for a booth, but I mean, they could buy a you know they could get a booth at a uh, you know, outdoor flea market kind of thing for maybe fifty dollars, and try that. You know, just just put it out there and, and talk to other people about. You know, give me some feedback of what you think about my mm-hmm. booth or what I think about my presentation. You know, right? Just put it out there and see what people's reaction and adjust accordingly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what are some tools, systems that you use in your life and your business that's been effective for you? Because I mean, obviously, when you're putting together these type of you know, events, it's a lot of stuff to coordinate. What do you do to stay on track? Um, I think being a Virgo really helps. <laughs> you know, what if we can't be, what if we can't be a Virgo? <laughs> can't be a Virgo, higher yeah. Virgo. Um, <laughs> you know, it's just you just really create some sort of because um, there's so many little opportunities that come through the expo that we want to make sure we capitalize on mm-hmm. and we don't want to lose those opportunities. So you know, you, you almost have to like, you know, almost on a weekly basis, I'll go through my inbox and just sort my mail. And it's, it's almost like you got to keep organized and keep on top of it, because once you fall underneath that, it just it's it's like a domino effect. You've got it. You can't swim out too ha- too easily. It's just really hard against the current. So you really have to stay on top of it and try to like stay on top of every little detail you can to. Uh, not miss opportunities and keep well organized because that's the only thing you you have is staying well organized. You know? Yeah. What do you use to stay on top of it? Like, do you use any specific software, or you keep a notepad by your you know bed stand that you're writing down right when you wake up, or what what do you do to stay on top of it? Because people have a lot of problems with productivity and kind of being disorganized, myself included. You know, I need to be more organized too. Um. Yeah. There's not really anything that I that I would say that I have a an easy way of that, but I think that just, you know, utilize whatever systems you have, you know, making files to different things in your folders in your computer to where people have that, uh, just stay, stay on top of it without going behind, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I figured, you know, I'm, we're all looking for the magic bullet, and I know there's not one thing, but I figured, uh, you know, there's some secret, secret out there that you had. Um, 
what's before you? I have one final question for you, Ken, and appreciate your time. But before I ask that final question, can you just tell us a little bit about the event and what you're working on with that? Well, the event this this year um, and last year we had Channel Five as a sponsor, and the only thing that they required us to do is for being a sponsor of the show, which is great, CBS, is that they said, well, we want you to support the San Francisco Food Bank. Mm-hmm. And so we said, okay, yesterday, last year we said, we'll support it. We'll let people come into the show for free if they bring in four cans of food. Wow. And um, so last year we advertised it like crazy. Well, we blew the food bank away. We brought in 8,700 pounds of food, which wow. equaled about 10,000 cans, which Jeez. equaled about 2,500 people coming in for free with that offer. And we're repeating it again this year, but we're not advertising it quite as much as we did last year. We're kind of seeing what the TV does and through social media. Mm-hmm. And so with your guests that listen to this, if they hear this and they want to come in the show for free, mm. you can bring in four cans of food and you can enter for free. So we're, we're doing that again. And that's just exciting because, you know, getting TV spots, you know, these sponsors give us free promotion in exchange for this. Mm-hmm. And so we're giving them, you know, a nice, we're just supporting what they, their cause that they like to support. And the other thing is just, you know, taking in uh, some of the, the program guide that we have right now on our website of New Event Expo mm-hmm. is a flip program guide. So it's really easy to see it and, and view it online and just, you know, read it, study it, and see who really interests you as far as a speaker. And, uh, you know, just try to take your time and, and be relaxed when you come to the show to absorb all this information because it's kind of an, um, you know, an te- intellectual overload when you get to the show. And especially on Sunday night, you're like, my God, I got this information. I got this bag of brochures and leaflets to go through. And what am I going to do with all of it? It's overwhelming. You know, kind of take what you really think you might utilize and try to explore that more after the show and, you know, take some subsequential workshops by these individual people who are, you know, doing those things and just kind of stay uh, involved with uh, what's happening and, and current. But the most part is just to really, you know, have fun at the show and, 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 and call it like a carnival of love, you know, because <laughs> it, there's so much good opportunities at our show. I mean, we have business opportunities to, you know, help you build a business up from nothing to, you know, just learning how to meditate or take a yoga class, learn how to do all these different things. And we, what we do is we pride ourselves in how we're able to draw the people in is that we offer a very low-cost admission because we include all the workshops, all the panels, lectures, booths, you know, all the theme things is only, you know, special events are not included, but it's like for $25 for the weekend, you can come in and see everything. And normally in a conference like this, you might be paying three or four or $500 right. for one person to go in. So we're charging $25 and it's, it's a nice low cost and it, that's what draws in the thousands of people because it's very affordable. And that's the message. We want to have the speakers have big attendances. Yeah. And with a low cost, and it doesn't cost extra to see John Gray, for instance, you can see him for you know same fee for the weekend, right. or buy one day pass for fifteen dollars. But it's so low that money. We never want to have money be the fact of why you can't come to the event. If you're mm-hmm. interested, we want to make it affordable. If you can't pay for it, volunteer for four hours and get in for free, or bring four cans of food. You know, just you know, you, you, we just want to get more people in to. Uh, support the exhibitors, of course, and just transform their own lives. Wherever they're at, they're going to find something valuable at the show, no matter where they're at in life. I mean, they're going to find a unique product or a service that they never knew existed, and they couldn't live without it after they had it, you know, that type of thing. What's been one of the most popular ones year after year that people attend? Like, so if they do go, like, what's like a, you cannot miss this one. This is like one of the best ones year after year. Of the speaker and exhibitor. Yeah, well, a speaker that maybe, or a topic that people like to check out. Well, I, you know, I, we've talked about John Gray a lot, and I love him because he's, you know, relationships, and people always are struggling with relationships. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, I've been married for 10 years almost now, and it's still a struggle. I mean, it, it, people just mm-hmm. think, oh, we'll get married and live happily ever after. <laughs> well, right. um, Miss Nomer, very much, they find out very soon after that, especially if they have kids. Right. Um, it factors quite a bit. So, what John, he talks about how men and women are so differently. We're wired differently. We have different, you know, mechanics that operate us. And he explains that so well 
Right. He's probably been with me one of the longest of all my speakers. Yeah. Um, but, you know, as far as relationships and, and people have the most challenge with that, I mean, he's one that probably, you know, you don't want to miss him because, boy, mm -hmm. he is just a dynamite speaker. Just For dynamite. Sure. And exhibitor-wise, there's just so many different things that's hard to say. You know, we had many exhibitors with us for many years, and I don't know any one particular that stands out that's really kind of cool. I mean, we have this foot bath thing that we like because you put your feet in it and it detoxifies your body through your feet because basically your feet are your, your whole body is located in your feet. All the nerve endings are there. Yeah. And so, you know, like you get a foot massage, not just your feet feel good, your whole body, you know. Right. So, no, I have seen that and it turns different colors. Yeah. Yeah, it turns kind of mm -hmm. brackish. You know, <laughs> so the yeah, final... Go ahead. Um, can okay, I was going to say, the final question I had for you was one thing that's happened at the conference that you would never have believed unless you were there to experience it. Because I know you have a lot of, you know, different exhibitors, speakers. What's one thing that's happened at the conference that just you would not have believed if you weren't there? Well, I, th I think, you know, the fact that people getting married is blows me away. That people meet and find their soulmates there. I mean, I never would have thought that. But only when people told me that in the last few years that they have, they've experienced that, that 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 one factor that they can find somebody that they can be compatible with and they're happy because they're on the same wavelength and they're you know got similar interests that that really blows me away that the that people find their love man at the expo and I have many good friends that are uh, married right now and and have found their mates at the show for the very first time and you know oh. I mean it just opens up that possibility I talked to a lady today who's buying a ticket for the show and she's single I kind of figured out she's single because she's coming by herself mm -hmm. she, she's having a hard time trying to find a, a soulmate you know and I said well you know open yourself up to possibilities you never know and so you know, people come with that open mind attitude and who knows what will happen you know maybe right. need a fr make a friend or make a lover who knows you know right no I love it you know, on that note can I just want to thank you for you know your time you know, over time with the technical difficulties and everyone should check out the website is newlivingexpo.com and, you know, just looks like they have a great lineup of speakers, exhibitors and, and everything. So Ken, thank you so much for your time. Yeah. One last thing is that the, con the concourse we just heard about a few weeks ago, they're, they're going to be, they've been after 25 years of doing shows there since 88, they're finally closing their doors and building condos next year. So we have really? to, uh, we have to move locations for 2014. So based on what I do with this new company and uh, location, so we're going to be having to move out of the concourse, unfortunately. So the concourse is in San Francisco. And just, just um, to reiterate, what are the dates of the conference uh, it's April twenty, Yeah, April 26th to 28, always the last full weekend of April. Mm -hmm. um, and we try to do it in San Francisco. Where we've tried, we'll try to stay in San Francisco if we can, but we may move to the South Bay or San Mateo possibly too for the next year but uh, as a San Francisco event it's been been a nice long run okay well Ken thank you so much and uh, I look forward to to seeing what happens with Expo in the future okay buddy thanks Jeremy alright thanks alright bye bye